people jump on, they can join in. But if y'all will just go ahead and say, like, if I call your name, say here, just so I can keep record of who is on. And I'm just going to go down the list I have. Um, Cole McClendon. Here. Becky Allen. Here. Aaron Lockhart. Here. Ashby Dower. Here. Uh, Jared Dower. Here. Sebae Sexton. Oh, I see. Tyler Allen. Here. Cooper Coffell. Here. Maggie Chapin. Here. Caleb Booth. Here. Stephanie Golightly. Stephanie Golightly. I'm here. Okay. Um, Jenna McCall. Yes. Caleb Booth. Here. Kaylee Beeson. Here. Devin Lockhart. Here. Audrey Nolan. Here. Alex Harris. <laughs> Did I miss anyone that's on? Okay, good. Well, just to get started, um, I know, thank y'all, everyone for emailing us. You know, we really appreciate you getting back to us as soon as possible. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a share screen and so you'll be able to see um, kind of what we have going. Can everyone see what the PowerPoint? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it big enough? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is just what everyone sent me. Um, and if y'all have more to add, feel free to let me know. But I just was going to go through all these. And this is just what everyone has um, told me. If y'all have any questions as we're going through this, let me know. Um, some of these are not exactly correct. Um, and I'll go through. So I'll mention that as we go through them. I just put them on there so that y'all didn't think I was leaving anything out. So um, to start off with, the only pay one due. If we merge, that is correct. There will only be one due, and we will have to determine that at a later date. We will still show separate at state show, but the major part of it, we do not have control over. Um, and I know that's a big topic with everyone. Uh, I want us to show separate. Um, JD wants us to show separate because we think that is what's best for our juniors. Um, that's 30 sales spots at Fort Worth Steer Show. That's 20 at Houston Steer Show. I mean, we don't want to get rid of any of those. But at the same time, like we also want to point out that San Antonio um, already merged. Um, and that was with us being separate. So, I mean, feel free to put anyone's input in. We want to hear it. Um, I know that Savannah personally talked to Stefan and at Fort Worth and then Joel at Houston. And they both said that as long as entries stay up, that they don't have any intentions of merging. Is that my granddaughter? It's wrong. Does anyone have anything to add? Anyone? No? Okay. All right. Um, state show will run smoother. Um, that's debatable. I mean, any, I would think it would, just having one association and one person being in charge. But it also has been brought to our attention when us dealing that it's been mentioned to us that maybe it would be a good idea for us to put a committee in place, whether we merge or don't merge. That way, you know, there's just one person, you know, making all the decisions. It's easier to get some answers because I know um, that when Jenna and I were president, it was hard to get answers out of Jack and Rocky and then put them together and make a decision. Um, and I think, you know, that's something we could also consider um, if we decide not to merge or even if we do, you know, just have a committee put together that handles everything state show. Any additions to that? Like that idea, don't like that idea. I'd say that's a pretty good idea. Okay. I think uh, having a committee either way is a good idea. Yes. Okay, on to the next one is not having to make sure both associations are doing their part. 
Um, there's been lots of griping and arguing back and forth that, you know, Horn does this and Pold does this. We wouldn't have to do that anymore. It would be a more effective and unified group. It would be better for keeping track of financials, which I agree wholeheartedly. Um, it is a mess trying to figure out um, where the money is going, who's paying for what. Um, and just on the side of, you know, when we win our Super States Award at Junior Nationals, it was hard to figure out where that $500 we won was supposed to go so that it benefited the juniors going to Junior Nationals. Um, and I'll bring it up later in our, there's another slide that I have thoughts on um, that Anna Kruger brought up to me is that, you know, maybe we should look into hiring a part-time person to just handle our financials. That way it doesn't go through the Pold Association or the Horned Association. Um, but that's something else to think about. There would be less confusion on who is in charge of what. The, leader, the leadership positions would mean more. It would be a less stressful environment. Kaylee, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just checking. Um, less arguments within the association, stronger leadership, more members working harder, the adult associations could support one which would make it easier, and then the new bylaws would be more current. Does anyone have anything to add to that or want to discuss any part of that? Uh, the thing about the bylaws. Yes. <laughs> if I mean, I, I think that we could update our bylaws as they are right now, don't you think? I agree, yes. And I think that, um, I know the Horn bylaws haven't been updated since 1995. Um, the Pold bylaws that I have a copy of say they were updated in 2014. But I mean, okay. either if we decide to stay separate or decide to merge, I think the Horned bylaws for sure need to be updated. Um, there's a lot of things that don't apply to us anymore and some things that are a gray area. Um, but yes, I think that it would be a good idea to update at least the horn side. The pulled side, in my opinion, is fairly current. Um, but if we want to update those two, you know, that would be something to consider as well. Uh, Stephanie West, can you hear us? I got gotcha. you. Okay. I was hoping there wasn't a whole lot of background noise. You're good. Okay. Does anyone have any other um Discussion on the advantages that we have so far. Um, I would, Riley, I'd like to go back to the um, the part about having a committee to run the state show. Yes. If you have a committee to run the state show and it's not associated with your polled or horned officers and directors what are your officers and directors going to do throughout the year other than take appointments that are assigned by the committee that's a good question um and i think that our higher up i guess uh, mm -hmm. positions in our associations would need to be on that committee um because that is the main thing as officers that we do but also, you know, the officers are supposed to, you know, help with the major stock shows in the ring and help do stuff at junior nationals. But I mean, at the end of the day, our state show is our main thing. So I would think that if we do have a committee, um, and this is just my thinking, is that the president's vice president's second vice um, need to be on that, committee. on that committee. And that would be, I guess, our higher up officers that would make up that committee. Typically, those are the ones that are going to continue on and become presidents in most cases. And that way you could have different years of running the show. You already have some background and it's not just being pushed to you all at once. Okay. Gotcha. Does anyone have anything else to add? Your Stephanie has your phone has a lot of background noise now. Okay, that would be Jay West. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. If he, there's Riley, a Riley, button at uh, the bottom left if you want to mute it and then unmute when you talk. 
Oh, one, suge one suggestion might be to get everybody have both copies of the bylaws from both organizations. Yes, sir. I will do that tomorrow. If y'all will um, check your emails, I will send you both horned and polled <laughs> bylaws tomorrow. Um, at least what I have. That way you can start reviewing the differences in them or the similarities in them. Yes, sir. We will send that out tomorrow. <laughs> Are there any other questions, um, additions to the advantages, concerns? No? Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the disadvantages. Can everyone see that slide? Yes. Okay, so um, again, I'm gonna roll through these, but at the same time, like if you wanna um, interrupt me, feel free, um, and some of these, we don't have control over, and I'll mention that. The disadvantages, royalty will most likely change. That is not up to us. Um, and I think I, it was my mistake. I think I did say at the Fort Worth meeting that, you know, that could be decided, but that is up to the Hereford Women Auxiliary in the Poland. And um, whatever we do does not affect what those associations do, nor does it affect what the big Texas Herpet Association than Texas Pulled Herpet Association do. They can still stay separate if we decide to merge or they can combine and we can stay separate. Whatever um, one does, it does not affect the other. And royalty is one of those things is that the auxiliary and the polets will decide the royalty. Um, and as far as I can tell from both sides that they intend to keep them separate so that there will still be the same amount of royalty there has always been. Um, and we don't want to take any of those opportunities away from um, any of our juniors there either. The next one is better to say you're involved in two associations than one association. I agree with that. You know, I've written on my resume, I'm involved in both. Um, but I also think it's something to consider. You know, it's, we're stronger. I think we could be stronger as one association. The officer positions will be split in half. Not necessarily. Um, however, if we were to merge, if we were to redo the bylaws, um, we can keep the same number of officer positions. Yes, it will be a little hectic and a little crazy, I will admit. But again, we don't want to take any of those leadership opportunities away. Um, there will be, we hope to keep as many officer positions and leader positions as possible if we were to merge. Um, Officer positions will be split in half. There's a high risk of losing sponsors. Um, several of you actually emailed this to me, and I was just curious for the ones that did email me, what if you knew of certain sponsors that would um, pull out or quit sponsoring, um, or if they knew it, if y'all knew a reason. Input there would be awesome. That's a big factor. And if that's gonna be a con, then we need to know who and why. Anyone specific name? I don't know any off the top of my head, but I feel that would be a... Um, I think that some people might split theirs in half because, you know, usually they would just be going to the association, so they might split it in half if it's just going to one. Okay, yeah. that's a good point, yes, that if people donate to the poll and to the horn, they might not double their sponsorship. However, I've also heard from sponsors that do not enjoy giving to both <laughs> as they will go to a, some – Hereford kid will ask for money, and then a polled individual will ask for money. And they feel that their show string or their cow herd is both. We don't have a true horned Hereford cow anymore or a true polled Hereford cow anymore. There's very few of them out there that are pure polled or horned, and they have, they have not enjoyed giving to just both whenever they feel like it's still one breed. Do y'all know of any specific names of ones that either give to one side that would not give any more? 
because of us merging? Well, okay, that would be value. That would be valuable to have. And, and another reason is because donations were down last year, and it would be good to know why they were down. You know, <laughs> there might be a correlation there, but there might not. I want to add that sometimes we don't know who we've even written the check to, whether we wrote it to the pole or the horn. Very valid point, and where it goes. Um, just so everyone's aware, um, Stephanie and Becky are going off of what Jack give, gave us at the junior show. He gave us an expense report. And in 2017, our donations for state show were approximately 19500 whereas in 2016, they were almost 25000 And in 2015, they were uh, 35000 So it's a $15,000 drop. So, I mean, we're also looking into why that happened as well, if anyone has any ideas. So, one of the things that Jack pointed out here, I don't remember which year it was of those, but there was one year we double dipped. Um, a letter went out early on, or, or maybe for the state show, and we got it, and then it went out before the end of the year, and we got it again. Um, I'm not sure what year that was, but it was in the last two. It might have been the 15. That might have been why we were so high that year. But there was a year we double we, we double dipped in there. And 2014, it was about 22,000, and 2013, it was about 18,000. Just for everyone's reference. Meeting a while back, that we were we double dipped one year, and it worked. Now, I'm not saying we need to do that every year, but it, it worked um, to our, you know, big way. And that, you know, probably that was 2015. Um, obviously, it was the highest number we got. But that was a deal where a set of sponsorship letters went out twice in the same year. But they were like six or eight months apart. And those regular donors we have just shelled it out the second time and never realized that's what had happened. But, but Jack pointed that out to us here a while back. Okay. Anything else on sponsors? Yeah, let's double dip again. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Okay, we'll go on then. Um, we kind of already touched on leadership positions, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that one. Um, but if anyone has anything to add, feel free. Hey, I have a quick question. Yes. Would it really be a bad thing to lose some of those leadership positions though? Because it's like we've got too many chiefs and not enough Indians. I agree um, that that, I would probably agree that some of, especially um, on the directors, on, even on the horn side, I'm speaking from experience, that some of those directors don't really want to do the work anymore, that they just want the title of it because they think it's cool. Um, and I would propose, just on the horn side, if we don't merge, that a change to the bylaws where you have to either submit an application or some sort of process where it's not just signing your name. That way we get more qualified and more um, <coughs> want to on the horn side at least and I know the polled side you have to do that and I think it's better the horned uh, or the sorry excuse me that the polled board is better for that reason is because you have people on there that actually want to be on there and they had to work harder than just signing their name up. I think that's a really good idea maybe just like giving a speech to the president or vice president about how like why you want to be on the board or just giving a little speech to them about that maybe that could yeah. Does anyone have anything else to add? One thing I do think that was really special, something that the Horn did, was have the junior director roles where younger kids can get involved. And that was a one year term where they have to sit out. So that might be something, if we do merge, that you do think about adding into the bylaws because those younger kids get that more younger kids get to have the experience of serving for a director for one year, then they have to get off so then more kids can get on. That's just my I agree. Piece. 
I do like that. And especially, you know, not, no offense against any junior directors on here, but when I was a junior director, I didn't do a whole lot. And, you know, they don't, we don't expect them to do a whole lot, but it was good to see, you know, what was going on, uh, what would be expected of me if I did want to be a leader later on. So I would recommend keeping that um, if we can merge. Very much so. Anything else? Something else that I was thinking of if the, just if the Horn bylaws get rewritten, is send in letters of recommendation for the director's officers. Yes. That would be a good idea, yes. And that would be something to consider um, if we do redo the Horn bylaws. And it's something to consider if we merge together at all. We have to have a good program to get the best of the best on the honored uh, directors anyways. So if we do revamp the horned bylaws or if we simply merge, it is something that needs to be looked into both ways. Those are great suggestions. Great suggestions. Anything else on leadership positions? Okay, well, moving on. Um, scholarships might change. I left this on here. This is not necessarily something we have control over. The junior associations don't give out scholarships. Um, the scholarships on the Horn side are through memorials or through the foundation. Um, some of them actually come from the junior fund. Um, and same way on the polled side, is they come from either um, certain people or the Polex, um, and also the auxiliary gift scholarships on the Horn side. Um, and yes, that could change, but that's not in our control either. And um, I just wanted to make that clear to everyone that we don't control scholarships. Obviously, we don't want to take any scholarships away, because uh, trust me, scholarships are awesome when you get to college and you can use them. But, and we don't want to take any of those away, I promise. Uh, but that's also something that's not in our control. Um, again, go ahead. So how are the poets and like, are they going to have to combine the poets? <laughs> no. So the poets are a completely separate organization from the juniors and the Texas Pulp Heritage Report. Um, they are their own separate organization. And so they do not have to combine, even if the juniors merged and the big, and the big boards merged, they would not have to combine. They could still stay separate. Uh, and they do lots of other stuff besides the junior stuff. Uh, now, if we were to combine, the auxiliary and pullets might have to work a little more together. Or um, I was looking at the pullets scholarship application, uh, and it just says you have to be a Texas Pull junior member. Um, and this would be something to take up with the pullets or the auxiliary either side. But they could just change that to, you know, they have to have a registered polled Herford member, you know, for that year. Um, that would be something to consider. But us merging or not merging, honestly, does not affect the auxiliary, the pullet, the Texas Herford Association, or the Texas Pulp Herford Association. Any other questions on that? Okay. Um, fear of majors combining shows. We kind of hit on this once, um, and JD and I both discussed it some. You know, we don't want any steer exhibitors to lose sales spots. We don't want any no. heifers exhibitors to lose premiums. If we thought that the majors would combine, if we combined, we, both of us would both be completely against it. Absolutely. We don't want to lose any opportunities for our juniors. But the bottom line is that <laughs> those big major shows are looking at the bottom line. If the entry numbers drop, they most likely will merge, like San Antonio did. But I think if the entry numbers stay the same, and we have talked to both officials at Fort Worth and Houston, they say they won't merge as long as the entries stay good. But this is a side note. San Antonio did not merge because of the numbers dropping. Why did they merge, Becky? Because the association, I think they asked the association to 
come up with money, I believe, is what I was told. Yep, yep. Becky's correct. They asked the association to put money towards the scholarships. So we'd have to put up 20000 Oh, well, sorry. That, that was an exaggeration on the numbers, but that's what the gist of it was. So that's an example of how it's... It, it's right driven there. by the bottom line. Right. Unfortunately, we don't have control whether they merge or not. And how do you keep your numbers up? That would be a good question to ask everybody. How are you going to keep your numbers up? If, if you want more sales slots and more scholarships, what are you going to do? Something you have to that Herford and Pold Herford are two of, the, two of the largest breeds that show in those shows too. So we, beat, we did, maybe don't beat Brahmin, but there's a bunch of other breeds that we beat out just for being Pold Herford and Herford. So that's something to keep in mind too. I mean, just think if you were to combine the horse oh. and the pulled shows at Fort Worth and you had a March calf, that class alone at Fort Worth was 38 calves this year. And luckily, Jack and Robbie convinced them to break it into 17 and 19 or whatever it broke out to. I don't think they want to throw in another 30 calves, March calves, and make it one breed. I think as long as our numbers stay consistent and stay up, that that won't be an issue. All right, moving on. Less scholarships. Again, I don't think this is going to happen because as long as the polets um, stay the same, the auxiliary stays the same, the foundation and the poll association stay the same, I don't see any scholarships being taken away. Uh, and I don't think anyone wants to take scholarships away no. from the juniors. I think everyone is, at the end of the day, their goal is to help promote Hereford cattle and to help our Hereford juniors. And if that means giving us more scholarships, I think that they're going to continue to do it. Um, less leadership positions. Um, we kind of talked about that earlier. Current directors losing positions. This is not true. Uh, and Tim, I'm going to have you talk a little bit on this um, because Tim was on the national board when they merged. If we were to merge, it would kind of be a trickle down. Whoever is still on the board would keep their positions. And whoever goes off, we will just nominate however many we're going to have. So say you want to keep all 30 leadership positions that we have. So there's going to be four kids going off on the horn bit board and four kids going off on the pulled board. Once they go off, we'll nominate 10 new ones. So, I mean, it's going to be crazy at first because we're losing eight and adding 10. So we're going to have more and more until everyone uh, ends their term and ends their position. And at one point, I think we're going to have 30 something, 36 so kids maybe. So the way we way they did it, I was I was on the board when the adults merged. Uh, the AHA and AHA merged years ago. My brother was on the board when they merged the National Junior Association. Um, so we kind of walked through this a few times. The way we did it in both cases is, and and I will tell you now, if this is not the way it is, our family will be a hard no. We are a hard no if this does not work this way. It has to be that if a kid was elected last year and he has a three-year term or a four-year term or whatever it is, that kid gets to serve his term. Agreed. No ifs, ands, or buts. They've got to finish their term. We are not up, up in the apple cart and starting over. We need to be able to use the, the group we have. And the way they did this in both the, when the AHA and the APHA merged, and when the National Junior Pole Hereford Association merged with the National Junior Hereford Association, the way we did that is we had what we kind of termed as a bloated board. Everybody went on to finish their term. <coughs> Instead of electing, and it all depends on how the new bylaws are written and things like that, of how many board members you want at the end. Or, um, but, but the way we did it is say eight fell off, but next year, the poles drop eight and the horns drop eight. Now, maybe I'm wrong there, but I think that's close to right. Then maybe we only elect four next year. So that way, 
you're going to get elected to a term that is yours. So the kids that get elected, and, and I, I guess, in my opinion, this pretty well has to happen at the state show, which is where all of our elections happen, whether it's this year, next year, or in five years. It's got to happen at a state show. That way, we don't lose the president. We don't lose any kind of things like that. It's just new kids getting elected. Nobody's losing their terms. Nobody's losing anything. You're just going to have a lot bigger board for a few years. And then as your term rounds out, you fall off. You fall off. You know, next year, you know, the kids that got elected three years ago or whatever, they're falling off this year anyway. Hey, they don't have any problem. The kids that get elected – they got elected a few years after that, they're going to run their term out. That's how that should work, in my opinion. And then those kids could get reelected by the bylaws. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, just like we do currently, you can rerun if that's the way the, you know, that's the way we write that. I know that's how the poll side is, and I think that's how the horn side is. Yes. Where if you're a, a director, you can rerun. There's no reason you couldn't do that. But there's only going to be, you know, however many slots we decide there is, it, when the new set of bylaws come out, that's how many slots there would be. But for a little bit, you're going to have a huge board. But we would be a hard no, hard no, if any kid lost their position, their director position um, that they were elected to last year, or maybe they got two years left, or however it works. Um, no part of us is about losing, kids losing the spot, period. And see, if that's one thing to consider if we merge is we don't want to take any positions away from anyone, just like Tim said. I mean, it's a hard no from JD and I as well. Agreed. You know, they were fairly elected to that position. There is no reason to take that away from them. And that's not what we're trying to do. Yes, it will be a pain having that big board for a year or two, however long it is. But eventually it would get right. Does anyone have any questions on how that would work? Well, I yes. think once you, I think you once you communicate that, you're going to uh, leave a lot of anxiety from people. So we're, I'm all for that. Because that's that's the biggest complaint we hear is people have already been elected to these spots, but they're going to have to give them up. So they're I think that's a good up. good idea. Well, if we rerun next, if we rerun next year, then how are we going to run? By which bylaws? Um, that'll also depend huh? on what happens and what our committee. Um, presents to our associations uh, and how all that plays out. Most likely we will run off the bylaws we already have. Okay. Any other questions on that part? Okay. Um, so, and then the next one is more stress of the one family to run state show by themselves. Uh, and like we discussed, you know, maybe having a committee to do that, whether we merge or not. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of stress on one family, but it's also even more stress trying to communicate through the pulled side and the horn side and getting everything in order. It's very frustrating for, um, so Zeller is the county agent at Bell County, and that's actually how the facilities are given to us. They're donated through Bell County. Mm -hmm. And he has a very hard time communicating with trying to get answers from the horn side and the pole side and trying to merge the answers and just how they want the stall set up this year, how big the ring they want, how this and that and anything else. And so yes, it is stressful for having one family do it, but it's even more stressful for the people we're trying to work with when there's two. I think there's one thing that's important, that no matter what happens, whether we merge or not, from this state show, and I know years past there's been one, there definitely needs to be a binder somewhere that comes with somebody, preferably maybe Jack or Riley or whoever, but that we make sure that the binder is complete this year so that way next year we don't go through the same exact problems that we went through this year and the year before and the year before. Mm -hmm. And I think some of that confusion might be taken out if we push it to a committee to take care of state show and things of that nature. I think that some of the confusion that comes from the county agent and Bell County side might be dissolved. 
Agree. Agree. Anyone else have anything to add to that? We're there. We're there right now for uh, our county fair, and we're in Bell County. And personally, I didn't think that we would be able to fit all in that part, but. They have completely, I don't know if any of y'all have seen it, but they've completely redone uh, the barn below where tie-outs were. And um, that could be our tie-outs. I'm very confident that we could all fit in there and that uh, we could fit in that back barn. In Good. The, um, on the top barn where we normally show, is that all air conditioned and ready to go? Yes. Sir. Yes. Good. And then, um, just so everyone knows, Savay and her mom drove by yesterday and sent me pictures. That new hotel that is going up next to the La Quinta is still not done. Just for everyone's information, that if you are planning on staying at that new hotel, it just looks like it's kind of been stalled, and it will. I don't know if it will be completed in time for us. Yeah, it's called the Expo Inn and Suites, and I think they have the front up, but um, it's not completely done for sure. So I just talked to the hotel systems about that. They had like a water line, main, something, big break. There, it will not be ready for state show. Do not have there. So you might pass that along to your friends or whoever, um, that I would not make reservations there because then you're gonna be scrambling for a room. <laughs> but is there anything else to add to the more stress of one family to run state show? <coughs> Um, I was out for that binder that talked about. It also needs to have what happens in January, February, like all the months, what information needs to go out. That I agree. That's a very good thing is Savannah was asking me this year, you know, when she needed to do this and when this needed to be done. And that's a very good thing is, you know, when um, donor letters need to be sent out, when all this other stuff needs to be done. Um, that's a very good idea today. You should have multiple people, like a conference call, sit down and then make sure that's ran through. Make sure we have multiple copies and probably give them out to multiple different people just so, you know, things yep. are on top of them. Okay, on to the next one. It says entry numbers might fall. And I honestly don't remember who sent me this. Um, so if anyone wants to elaborate on that, um, on how the entry numbers might fall. In my opinion, I don't really see the entry numbers being affected um, whether we merge or not, but I, if anyone has any idea, I'd love to hear it. Okay, if not, does anyone have any other disadvantages they want to share or any concerns or questions about what we have on the screen right now? Okay, we're going to move on to just kind of some thoughts. You know, some people sent me, you know, just that they weren't quite sure where it fell. Um, and I just kind of made a thoughts column for something for us to talk about. Uh, and it is the only state to not be combined. Um, which that doesn't really affect us, you know, whether all of the states are separate or whether they're all combined, you know, what? Texas is our own thing. We don't have to combine just because everyone else is. We, don't, we wouldn't have to stay separate just because everyone else is separate. Um, I don't really think that affects us. Um, might be an inconvenience at the national level, but they'll deal with it. Um, the Paulettes and Hartford women are doing just fine by themselves. I agree. Um, Again, you know, the Polettes and Hartford women are two separate organizations that help the juniors, but then again, they are not directly affected by whether we merge or not. Um, and I realize that that will cause some headaches for people on the Polette side and on the Hartford women's side, you know, trying to figure out their scholarships and how they're going to deviate their money. Um, but that's not directly affected by whether we merge or don't merge. And the next thing, older kids that are in college that are about to be done, and it will be left on the kids that are in high school's shoulders. Uh, hate to break it to y'all, but I got three years left. You're gonna have to deal with me for a while. My little sister Aiden has 10 years left. 
pretty sure you'll be seeing me around. I'll be glad to help in any way I can. Um, we're not trying to throw this on anyone's shoulders or make it the burden of someone. Um, I plan to, if we merge, I plan to stick it out, help in any way I can. JD does, feels the same way. Um, we are longtime Hereford breeders. You know, we're in it for the long run. We would be more than happy to help once we are done with this committee in any way possible. We have tons of advisors and uh, tons of adults that I know are willing to help. So I don't think we would ever lose them. Okay. And then uh, planning state show shouldn't be the only reason we combine. And that's very true. You know, if the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, I would 100% agree. Um, but state show isn't the only reason we are combining. Um, the president's job is also to coordinate, you know, our activities and meals and all that stuff at Junior Nationals. And that is hectic when you're having to get stuff, get money from two associations, when you're having to plan with the other president. Um, it's kind of a pain to say the least. And that's another reason that, you know, it might be easier to combine. Also, it might be easier, I know, um, there was some confusion a few weekends ago at Fort Worth that um, some kids didn't know that we were working the ring in Navy Blazers. Um, and that confusion might have been able to have been avoided if we only had one association. But at the end of the day, state show is the biggest thing that our boards do, um, both of us. And I think that it should be a large factor in our decision. Riley, I would like to add that um, some may not have recalled that the Horn show uh, gave a scholarship to the top four placings and the poll did not. That to me is not cool. That to me, it means that we are not acknowledging the polled side. All of you kids work hard and everyone needs to have an opportunity at that scholarship. And if you have one out there that you think is your best effort to show, you're, you don't care if it's polled or horned. Most of you don't. You're going to show the best one that you think is going to place the highest. And so here we have, we had four kids getting foreign scholarships, but no polled kids. And that's all part of this problem of money here, no money there. If joined, I feel like that we would have money to share for both breeds. I agree. The next thing is um, what Anna Kruger sent me um, and Stephanie Glightly, if you want to add to this. Um, she is very good with numbers and accounting and all that. And she recommended to me that if we decide to combine, dissolve, merge, whatever you want to call it, um, she would recommend from a financial standpoint um, that a merger would be better because it would be just one 501c3 organization. And that just may, basically has to do with accounting and nonprofit and all that, um, which would mean we would have one set of financial reporting. She also recommends we organize a specific structure with a president elect and a past president position. So basically how that would work is you would have a president elect, a president position and a past president. So when you're signing up to be president elect, you're basically signing up for three years of offices. Um, that way, as president-elect, you can be watching and learn um, what you need to be um, doing next year and paying attention. And I know the poll has this set up, and I think it works really well for them is because the president-elect knows what's expected of them and knows to look at stuff like that and see, you know, what can be improved or what's not working. Um, and then when you get to be president, that way you have the past president there to tell you, this is what didn't work for us. This is what needs to be changed. Um, that way you have that wealth of information right there that you can share. And it's easier to run state show. And that's also something, you know, if we do that committee, it would probably play into that. Um, and some, just some other questions that she had. 
is, you know, who is going to handle the financials if it'll be someone from the horned or pulled side? Or, you know, if we should look into hiring a part-time position to handle just the junior finances and coordinating the activities. Are there any other thoughts to that? I have something. So going back on what Ms. West said, um, that scholarship is just on the, like the Texas Herford Association is over that. That has like nothing to do with the juniors. So Correct. I feel like there's like, that's not something we could really change as juniors, but that would have to be totally on what the polls think as advisors and adults. Absolutely. That's right. that, that is very true. That's very true. But my thinking is if you're a group of kids showing together united it doesn't matter what breed you're showing you know you know i could be wrong but my thinking is if you're all together as a group we're going to give out scholarships irregardless i mean i that's how i look at it but i'm not the one giving those but yes, Jen, I see what you're saying. That is up to the uh, Texas Pole Herford Association um, for that Fort Worth High Placing Junior, whether they but, give that to the pole kids or not. Okay. Is there any other thoughts, discussion? Uh, on the 501, the poll already has a 501 down on their or for their finances. Uh, yes, and that's how the horn is set up as well. That's what um, okay. Anna was saying to me is that it would be easier to merge since we're both 501c3 organizations uh, rather than dissolving both and creating a new one, which is what the motion was at State Show. Uh, that's what she recommended as from a financial accounting standpoint that it would be easier to merge instead of dissolve. Gotcha. Can, can you legally combine the funds from both of those? Um, we're looking into that. Um, I have asked okay. Jack and Robbie um, to look into their both legal side of it and see what needs to be done if we were to merge, how that would play out. Um, honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. Is there any other thoughts? Um, I have a question. Yes. So what about the people that were not at the Fort Worth Junior Show, wherever we had the meeting? What about those people who weren't there who wanted to be on this committee? Like, um, that, that's kind of hard because we set up the committee where we were had an even number of horned and pulled. Um, but we don't want to exclude anyone from being on the committee. But I want to say the best way for them to be involved would be to share their ideas, thoughts with someone on the committee. And then they can translate that into the committee. And the members of the committee can present it to us. Um, uh, I can ask if we can add more members, I'm not sure. But just how the way it was set up at the meeting was that we needed an even number of polled and horn representatives. Yes. Um, and I don't want to throw that off balance, but I can ask and see. But as of right now, the best would be for those members to present their thoughts, opinions to someone on the committee and have that committee member represent it. Okay. Is there any other thoughts? Is there any other questions that anyone else has that we did not bring up tonight? Raleigh, what are your um, plans for future meetings or ideas before the state show? Um, well, and I, like I said before, and I don't think Stephanie, you were on yet, the whole point of this committee is, or both of these committees is to form an opinion or a recommendation 
and present that to our separate associations. Now, what those separate associations do with that is up to them. Um, <laughs> but this will most likely come to a vote at state show, um, and we need to have our recommendation to them at that time. Um, but it all depends on our discussion in these conference calls, you know, how often we have them, um, uh, all that sort of thing. Honestly, tonight I'd like you to take your thoughts, um, look this over. I will send out, JD and I will send out the bylaws tomorrow so you can look over that. Um, you, know, you can feel free to email JD or I any questions, thoughts, concerns, opinions, whatever you want to. Um, and then I would hope to have another conference call um, in a few weeks, uh, maybe after the crazy dies down a little bit from stock show season. Um, and reconvene and see what everyone's thinking then. Riley, are you wanting to are you wanting to have a new set of bylaws developed for the state show when they vote? No. So this committee, how it was presented, and um, I asked Ryan um, what I asked him exactly what this committee was supposed to do based on how we worded our motion, and he says okay that we cannot develop a new set of bylaws. We can only give our recommendation whether the associations should merge or not merge um, at state show. So, so that would be the next step, next step after that. Yes, yes, sir. So if, you know, our recommendation okay. is to merge and, you know, both sides voted to do that, then we would still have our old bylaws in place probably until the next Fort Worth meeting because that's our other next annual meeting. And then we would have to, present new bylaws there and vote on them there. Gotcha. It's how I understand it's supposed to work. Right. Does anyone have any other questions? <coughs> I just want to say as one of the adults on this conversation that all of the junior members who have been on this call and on this committee have really done a great job as conducting themselves as adults and conveying their opinions and thoughts in a manner that can be respected by everybody. And we really appreciate that as all the advisors on this call. And we really congratulate y'all for getting this started and the ball rolling and getting the conversation started. It really shows what great um, kids you guys are. This stepping up and taking this leadership role is a big deal. So. Um, Patrick, Jeff's on the back because you deserve it. Does anyone have any other questions, concerns, comments, opinion, anything? Good job. Okay. Well, um, I will send you all, or JD and I will send you all the bylaws first thing in the morning. Um, so be checking your email for that. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to email or text us. If someone does not have our contact info, let us know. Um, and then we will make a game plan from there on when we will next meet. But next meeting, we will need to uh, either have a good discussion or make a decision. Um, but feel free to do those research. Reach out to juniors that are in your area or your friends that you know that are juniors and see what they're thinking. See what they want to know what's going to happen. Um, see what their opinions are. You know, we want to hear every side of it. You know, if there's something that we're not thinking about that's a disadvantage that we want to know about, that could be a deal breaker. Uh, we want, at the end of the day, we want what's best for every junior in our organization. But if y'all don't have any more questions or thoughts for tonight, we will let y'all get back to watching the Super Bowl. And I believe we're just in time for Justin Timberlake's halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if there's no more questions, comments, thank y'all so much for getting on. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.